Right, that's the pilot kit beers taken care of. What we have to do now is recirculate these tanks. Also known as rousing the hops. So it's just these two, the proof of concept and the bacon. So it doesn't take long. I like to spray all the outlets for a minute or two first. Let that sanitizer take effect. And we're going to pop the O rings on. The hose pipe's already hooked up to the pump. So the pump is now recirculating sanitizer through it and the pipework that we're going to be using. And then when we put the pipework on the fittings onto the tank, we're going to bleed the air out of those fittings before we open any valves and let the beer start travelling down the lines. So yeah, this can be a little bit tricky for the first time that somebody's done it. But usually, it's not too much of a problem, so... Just getting these fittings in position now. There we go. So that's what's going to be our outlet on this occasion we don't want to be pulling we don't want to be pulling all the trube and the yeast cake from the bottom of the cone on the tank instead because we think that the hops may be sat on top of that yeast cake we want to push it all back into suspension now this cone's been dropped twice over the past week so the majority of the trube has gone and what should be left because the beer's finished, are uh, at the bottom some dead yeast cells. Well, that'll be throughout, that'll be stratified throughout the yeast cake, I assume. But at the bottom, there'll be a little bit of trouble remaining, some dead yeast cells, and then above that, we'll have the more flocul flo flocculent uh, of the living yeast cells, and then the ones that don't want to flock out, they will still be up in suspension. So it's also had two treatments of auxiliary finings and brewer's clarity. So what that's going to do is, it's a vegan form of finings as well. That's just going to grab hold of any more particles that are in there. And by doing this, we're pushing everything back up into suspension, enabling those finings to do their job. And then they'll all float back down to the bottom and the tank will be a heck of a lot clearer when we come to put in it, putting the beer into packaging. So really quite simple. So first thing I'm going to do is get myself a tray. There we go. Just a little tub to catch any of the uh, rubbish. So as you can see, we're pumping. All I'm going to do is just cut that, and then I'm going to connect it to the hose pipe and I'm going to turn the pump back on. So now it's pushing into the cavity between the fitting that we've just put on and the back of the butterfly valve and then behind that butterfly, butterfly valve is the beer. So we're going to flush that, we're going to evacuate it. And there you can see We've got the Persid coming through now. It can get a little bit tight because these pumps can push out a fair old bit of pressure. Then we're just going to start to nip that up. There we go. Now the next trick is we close that valve. That's been evacuated of any air. So now we're going to connect our supply this side. Now we still want the bottom valve open, right? Because we want to push the Persid out of the valve now. So there's still a lot of Persid in there, look. So this pump's pulling, but it's going to start pulling beer. There we go. It's pulling beer in through this pipe now. And it's evacuating all the Persid out of the pipe. We've got beer flowing down here. There we go. 
pull in any CO2 out of that pipe as well. And we're just going to trickle that beer out the bottom of this valve. Well, we're going to keep pushing until we actually see the beer come through. So we, we need to just pump a little bit harder. Set the actress to the bishop. And there we go. You can see that I'm just going to get under here and just help it along the way. So now you can see this looks like beer to me. There we go, that was a good one. In fact, it smells a lot like beer as well. So now we're going to seal that up and open that valve. So now all this valve, all this pipe is full of beer. That's going into the pump and then the pump's pushing it into the bottom of the cone here. But it can't go anywhere yet because we've got this valve shut. That's evacuated up. The Persid evacuated the air. The beer evacuated the Persid. So now we've just got beer sat at the other side of that valve wanting to go into the tank. And there we go. So now we've got full flow. And then usually what I tend to do is we'll just point this valve up the way so we're pulling the beer down a little bit more. Hold on a sec. So this, is, this takeoff port is adjustable so we can rotate it and wherever this stem points is where the takeoff valve arm inside is pointing. So now it's just out of shot really isn't it? But you see what I mean. So now we're coming out of the takeoff port, down and into the pump and back into the tank at the bottom. So we're taking the beer from the centre of the tank, and we're pushing it up from the underbelly, mixing it up and any of those hops that are sat down at the bottom and sank, they're now getting pushed back into the body of the beer where they can start to release their flavours and aromas. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to set a timer. I'm going to leave it for 15 minutes to half an hour. Doesn't really matter. You can leave it all day if you wanted to. One thing to make sure of, of course, is that none of your fittings are leaking and you're dragging air into the system. If that's happening, then you're oxidising your beer and it's going to be ruined. But doing it this way, I've never had an uh, oxidation issue from the recirculation of the beer. So there we go. We'll leave that for 15 minutes. Then disconnect it. Push it through with the Persid again. And then we'll disconnect. We'll put it onto the next tank and follow the exact same procedure. But you don't need to see that twice now, do you? No.